Just like the bird who feels the sun and sings before the dawn has come. Have faith, have faith. Yeah, yeah. Slowly, slow, my child, the world waits for you. And your window of time will come shining through. Slowly, slow, don't you know it'll all come easy Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Inna alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdi allahu falamudilla lahu wa man yudlil falahadiya lahu wa ashahadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lahu وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد my respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته welcome back in this path of ours where إن شاء الله we getting close to ultimate bliss very close إن شاء الله we've discussed so much We've mentioned so many means. We've mentioned so many beneficial ways of achieving happiness. We are in the last parts, inshallah. But as we say, inshallah, we hope it be khitamuhu misk, as Allah says. The end should be pure and very nice also. Today we continue reading what the Sheikh, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, has to say to us. What the Sheikh is giving us from his so much uh, 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 learning and so much experience in life. By the way, I should have mentioned this. The Sheikh, when he wrote this book, he did not just take from the Islamic sources, as to say. He even took from non-Islamic authors. Yes, he took from non-Islamic authors. That's why you remember in the first episode he said, there's religious there's physical and natural ways to attain happiness. And we shall mention all of them. And as you have been with us, alhamdulillah, we've been together. We've mentioned so, so many of those. He continues to say today, chapter 5. Among the most beneficial things that remove worries and anxieties when a calamity befalls a person is for him to struggle to lighten its difficulties by imagining the worst possible thing that would have happened to him and try to put up with from the means or he says rather the sheikh says i'm just repeating from the among the most beneficial things that remove worries and anxieties when a calamity befalls a person is for him to struggle to lighten his difficulties and how do you do that by imagining the worst possible thing that would have happened to him this is what we call Imagining the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario. Then let him after that now physically strive as much as possible to lighten the difficulty. By him striving for what will benefit him. And by his effort in putting up with it. His worries and anxieties will vanish. And will have used his energy in achieving what is beneficial. And warding off what is harmful. Within normal human ability. So if some dreadful things or illnesses or poverty and deprivation of what of wants afflict you, dreadful things or illnesses or poverty or anything which you want and you didn't get, when these things afflict you, he should encounter these things with tranquility and try as much as possible to put, to put up with them. Imagine the worst case scenario, physically try to push them off and you mention so many ways of how to do that encounter them with tranquility in fact he should prepare himself to put up with something worse worst case scenario this is because preparing oneself mentally to deal with unpleasant things it makes them light when you prepare yourself you prepare you know things are going to get worse things are not going to be smooth all my life. I have to be tested. One day something will happen. When you prepare yourself 
this makes the burden, as we can call it, or the tribulation or the difficulty when it comes, it makes it very light on you. And it blunts out its pangs of pain. The pain becomes so much less because you are prepared. Like we gave the example, I'll give the same example. The one who was watching the news, oh, he heard somehow tomorrow there will be an earthquake. So he prepares himself. He, he, he takes some, some food provision and puts in his house. He, he puts some, uh, some, uh, some fortification in his doors and his windows and all that. Is he going to be the same when the earthquake hits than the one who didn't know that? He just hit him like that? Of course not. When you prepare yourself, this is very, very important in lighting up the burden of the things which are going to, to happen. And it removes the pain for so much, it makes it so mild. The Sheikh then says, this is especially so when in addition, when in addition to that, he physically acts toward them off. In addition to the mental preparation, you have physical preparation. By that, he joins together the dual acts of mentally preparing himself to deal with the calamity and the physical effort toward of the worries, which together they serve to engross him away from being troubled and being disturbed by the calamity. He should also make an honest effort to replenish his inner energy necessary for encountering these adversities. The Sheikh says, have some time. These two things will help you. Mental preparation, and we discussed about that. Here the Sheikh, he added us another benefit, which is imagining the worst case scenario. Wallahi, this works very well. When something, when something uh, you didn't unpleasant happens to you, become sick, you lost somebody, uh, you, you became poor, you lost your money or whatever, say to yourself, what if it was like that? Imagine the worst case scenario. Allah could have made it so worse on you, but he didn't give you that worst case. He gave you what is just a little bit bad. Say, Alhamdulillah. Look at those who are suffering more than you. This is very, very important. That is the mental preparation and try to ward off those things physically also. He says, and also you should make an honest effort to replenish the inner energy. Everybody gets sapped or tired. Every now and then you need something to, to increase your morale and to increase that inner energy, that drive of yours. Take a walk, go outside in a, in a garden or in a park and watch the, hear those nice voices of birds singing and, uh, and uh, look at the trees and take a trip somewhere, you know, to increase your energy. Or if you increase your energy by listening to the Quran, that is better for you. Or reading a book, everybody has his ways. As long as they're halal, they're, they're okay in the Sharia, then do those things which increase your energy and, and replenish you. He says, in addition to all these, he must absolutely depend on Allah in all circumstances. He must absolutely depend on Allah in all circumstances. And have sincere trust in Him. There is no doubt that these things are very helpful in bringing about happiness and satisfaction to the heart. There is no doubt that these things are very helpful in bringing about happiness and satisfaction to the heart. And besides that, there is what he hopes to gain reward. You have that hope. We talked about ar raja having hope in Allah, a reward in this world and in the hereafter. This is well known from experience, the Sheikh says. And whoever tests it, he knows it. So this point the Sheikh emphasizes mental strength. Imagine the worst case scenario. Replenish your energy. This gives a good time. It gives a good life. Next point, next chapter, the Sheikh says, among the greatest cures to nervous and mental disorders and even other illnesses of the body is the firmness of the heart and strength and lack of it being troubled and perturbed by illusions and imaginations brought about by evil thoughts. Strength of the heart. This is because whenever a person lets imaginations get the better of him and allows his heart to be perturbed by negative effects like fear of illness 
or fear of anger and or anger or confusion over some painful situation or anxiety over something bad happening or you are expecting loss of something which is dear to you whenever you let these imaginations get into you it will surely throw him into the den into the cave of grief sorrow and physical and mental illnesses and surely shall result in a nervous breakdown whose terrible effects are well known to everybody this chapter or this point is related to the last to the previous one mental strength strength of the heart and alhamdulillah we have discussed so much what makes the heart strong the quran dhikr uh, istighfar as-salat ala nabi doing good to others worshiping allah in general this is what makes the heart strong and also something we should mention stay away from the diseases of the heart jealousy envy having hatred to other people with no with no reason fourth just being you're, you're just concerned with the dunya this is one of the things which just takes you takes out your your energy from the heart and just makes you to be to be to be affected every moment that you just feel you're going to be poor every moment you feel that i'm going to be destroyed every moment you're unhappy your heart my heart it is built it is strengthened it is fortified by the worship of allah and having hope in allah let your concern be the akhirah this is something we should mention the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says man uh, man asbaha minkum the one who wakes up every day wa hamhu al akhirah and his main concern is how he's going to please allah today his main concern is the akhirah not just the dunya jamma allah shamlahu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes his things easy for him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes life good for him and allah gives him the rizq wa atahu ad dunya hiya raghima aw hiya saghira fi riwayah and allah will bring to him the dunya the worldly enjoyments allah will give it to him even though it's to him this dunya doesn't mean anything wa man kana ad dunya ya akbar hammu and the one whose main concern is just the dunya he doesn't think about the akhirah tomorrow he doesn't think about pleasing allah like those people who he prefers to continue work than to go to salah al pray asr maghrib isha he prays them at home at night all of them together subhanallah shattat allah bayna amra allah makes his affairs lost from him wa farraqa shamlahu and he doesn't know what he's doing he wants to do this he wants to do that he wants he cannot focus on anything nothing happens for him wa ja'ala allah al faqra bayna aynayhi and allah puts poverty in front of him every time he thinks i'm going to be poor i'm going to lose this he never has a happy life he is the one who's really wretched suffering in this life why because he puts pleasure of people or pleasing his own desires before pleasing allah let the akhirah be your main concern this is one of the most important things in giving you mental physical and strength of the heart After the break inshallah we move on to the next point which is very very important please don't go anywhere until then I live in the key of Allah slowly slow don't rush you know it all come me say assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome back your brothers and sisters we discussing today inshallah as you seen the sheikh pointed out the importance of mental strength and the strength of the heart moving on he mentions one of the most important things in bringing happiness to our life one of the most important things he says and this is one of the things which gives life to the heart by the way makes the heart strong and firm he says whenever a person relies and depends on allah whenever a person relies and depends on allah and does not surrender his heart to illusions and does not let evil imaginations get the better of him and puts his trust in allah and has confidence in his favor grief and sorrow will vanish from his heart 
as a result of these actions and many other physical and mental illnesses will leave him and his heart will experience such joy and tranquility which is beyond expression. How many a hospital is filled with sick people suffering from mental illusions and evil imaginations. Just illusions and imaginations. How many a strong person, strong with the body meaning, have these things shattered their hearts to say nothing of the weak ones, let alone the weak people. People are strong and healthy but they are shattered down and they suffer nervous breakdowns and they are in their mental, uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, psychological facilities, whatever, just because of what? Illusions and imaginations. They have no reliance and dependence on Allah. The only one exempted, the Sheikh says, the only one exempted from this is the one whom Allah has given well-being and guided him to struggle with his self in acquiring useful and be beneficial means of strengthening the heart and warding off worries from it. The only one whom Allah has given well-being, as you see it emphasizes the point, it's Allah who gives you these things. So ask Allah, like we talked about in the last episode, ask Allah, have hope in Allah. Do those things which Allah said, do this and I'll give you so much. Do those things. He says, Allah the Most High has said, وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And surely the one who puts his trust in Allah, relies on Allah, depends on Allah, فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah is sufficient for him. Allah is, is sufficient for him. Allah is sufficient for him, meaning, the Shaykh says, meaning that Allah is sufficient for him in all that worries him concerning his religion and his deen and his dunya and his worldly life. Allah will suffice in everything. Allah will take care of everything for you. The one who has what? Who has tawakkul, trust in Allah. Ikhwanifillah, listen carefully. He says, a person, who puts his, a person who puts his trust in Allah has a strong heart that is not affected by illusions, nor moved about and concerned by events and occurrences because he knows that that is from a weak heart and is an act of weakness and fear and has no reality. Illusions, imagination, maybe. What if? Leave that. Leave reality. Be in reality. Leave the moment, as the Sheikh said. Leave the moment. Kun ibn yawmik, as he said. Be the, the child of this, this day right now. He says, he also knows that Allah, he is talking about now the person who puts his trust in Allah, the people of tawakkul. He also knows that Allah has guaranteed the one who puts his trust in him, that he'll suffice him completely. So he's confident in Allah, this builds your confidence. Many people, brothers and sisters, those who complain, some of us, I can't have, I don't have confidence in front of others. Or I'm, I'm very, very uh, uh, shy, and uh, even the things which benefit me, I can't do them. Tawakkul is the one which will give you and bring confidence into your heart, gives you, give you strength. And he feels assured of the promise of Allah. As a result, his worry and anxiety it vanishes and his difficulty is replaced by ease after the usr comes the usr and his sadness is replaced by happiness and his fear is replaced by peace and security and tranquility we ask allah to give us well being and uh, and exempt us from his uh, from the adversities or tribulations and we ask allah to grant us strength of the heart and its firmness in having true confidence in him by which if he gives us that he guarantees those who, ha who have this tawakkul he guarantees them to have the provision of all good all kinds of good and the removal of all kinds of harm and evil Attawakkul. Attawakkul is mentioned in the Quran and in Subhanallah. We need days and day episodes after episodes of tawakkul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The writing is prophet in us. 
I'll just mention five or six situations where we need in our daily lives where tawakkul comes and plays a big part. When you want victory and that you want ease after difficulties, then tawakkul is the, is the cure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنْ يَنْسُرُكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ وَإِنْ يَخْذُرْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْسُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ If Allah gives you strength, Allah gives you the aid, the victory, nobody can get away. And if Allah puts you down, who can give you that victory and that aid and that happiness? So what do you do? وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Let the believers have tawakkul, trust, and depend on Allah. Another thing. When the enemies attack you, let your main weapon be tawakkul. Allah says, فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُ مَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Turn away from them. And you have tawakkul in Allah, and Allah is sufficient of al-wakil. From the names of Allah is al-wakil. What is al-wakil? Who is al-wakil? The one to him, all affairs are put in his charge. In Al-Wakil, linguistically in Arabic today, we can translate as a lawyer. What is the work of the lawyer? You make him, you put him in charge of your case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Wakil, the greatest of all those whom you put in charge. He disposes all your affairs. Leave your things to him, depend on him. Just do your small part and you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of you. When you want to do Islah rectification on the earth, the key is tawakkul. When you want to know that how to attain a, a security and peace after hardships, Allah says the believers when they attain, when they, when they are tested, they say, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا فَعَلَى اللَّهِ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Say to them, nothing touches the believers except that it's from Allah. We believe in His Qadr. Allah distant this, but we also believe huwa maulana, he is our maula, our patron. Wa ala Allahi falyatawakkal al-mu'minun, on Allah should the believers trust and depend. At-tawakkul, ikhwan, my brothers and my sisters, is very, very important. Very, very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa man yatawakkal ala Allahi fa huwa hasbuh. The one who depends on Allah, Allah is sufficient on him. In Surah Al-Zumar, Allah asks a question, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهِ Isn't Allah sufficient for his slave? Allah, Allah is sufficient. Why do you look at somebody else? Why do you depend on anybody else? Depend on Allah. Remember the hadith, إِحْرِسَ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكَ Be diligent, strive for that which benefits you. وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ And depend on Allah. Remember the hadith the Prophet says, the one who leaves his house every morning or every any time and says, Bismillahi, by the name of Allah. Tawakkaltu ala Allahi, I depend on Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no might or strength of change except by Allah. When you say that, it is said in heaven. Hudita wa wuqita wa kufita. You have been guided and you have been protected and you've been sufficed. The shayateen who are outside, they come to attack you. But the other shaytans, they say to them, كَيْفَ بِكُمْ بِالرَّجُلْ قَدْ هُدِيَ وَوُقِيَ وَكُفِيَ How can you get this person when he's been guided, he's been protected, he's been sufficed? Because when you leave the house, you say, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَا حَوْلَ لَا قُوَةَ لَا بِاللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ حَسْبُكَ اللَّهُ وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ O oh, you prophet and all oh, you believers, Allah is sufficient for you. Rather, Allah made it a condition for belief, true belief. If you, we have to be true believers, and we talked about in the first episodes, true belief, iman is the fundamental block of having happiness. Allah put a condition. If you're true believers, you have to depend on Allah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Depend on Allah if you're true believers. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, especially those who complain that I, I work so much but I don't, how come I don't get rich? I know most of us, we ask ourselves our qu this question. I want to get more rich. لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلْ If you had the right tawakkul in Allah, depend on Him completely, just do whatever we have to do, whether it is work or you, the, the, you, you, you have a business or you're studying, 
Do your small effort, leave the, the rest depend on Allah. If you had the real tawakkul, the Prophet says, لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ التَّيْرِ Allah would suffice you and provide for you just like how he provides for the birds. تَغْدُوا خِمَاسًا وَتَرُوحُ بِتَانًا The bird it leaves that nest in the morning, he has nothing. The birds don't have fridges where they put food and whatever. It leaves in the morning having complete tawakkul and it returns in the evening with a full belly, the Prophet Sam says. If we had the right tawakkul, Allah would provide for us just like how he provided the, the birds. Tawakkul is the key to happiness. The one who depends on Allah, Allah is sufficient for him. Allah will suffice you in everything, in your worldly affairs and your deen. And that is the way to success, the way to happiness. Inshallah, next episode, we continue this path of ours to happiness. Until then, we put our trust and our dependence on Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just like the bird who feels the sun And sings before the dawn has come Have faith, have faith yeah, yeah. Slowly, slow, my child The world waits for you Just like the bird who feels the sun And sings before the dawn has come Have faith Slowly, slow, my child, the world waits for you, and your window of time will come shining through. Slowly, slow, don't rush, you know, it'll all come easy.